everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Place of Binding of Isaac Adderith Plus. Four wins in a row and a brand new day of recordings. And we're not the keeper. I had to hold my breath temporarily there, but it worked out. AVJG, ECQF. Dude, I gotta tell you, starting today, I don't like to start on a negative note, but I'm a little bit cheesed. I'm cheesed on a, on a nationally embarrassing level, you know why? I saw a news story this morning. Really tugged at the old rage strings. Apparently, the Green Bay Packers and, uh, where are the Raiders now? Are they still in Oakland this year, or is this a... Anyway, the Raiders and the Packers played, uh... An NFL preseason game. I cannot suck this up. This is way too dangerous. Uh, in Winnipeg. But as a result of the fact that the, the stadium and the field is designed for Canadian Football League play. Which has slight alterations to American football. Like, you know, the, the goal posts are like in the middle of the field or something like that. Instead of being at the, the end of the touchdown zone. Anyway, at the end of the end zone, I should say. They were forced to play the game with no kickoffs on a field 20 yards shorter than the traditional field. You might say NL. Why, why would that story make you mad? Well, I will say first off, I'm not actually mad. I think it's, it's largely a humorous story, but I'm going to play up the anger for laughs nonetheless. Uh, the reason I'm mad is not because... Like, here's the thing. It's fairly understandable, you know? You got a, you know, a stadium that cost you tens of millions of dollars to build, if not more. And it's specifically designed for Canadian football. You don't have an American football or a National Football League team in Winnipeg. We don't have any of them in Canada. So of course you would build it to the specifications required for Canadian football. However, it just, it plays into the American stereotype of Canada too much that it makes me modestly cheesed off. It's like in Canada, they play football, but it's on an 80-yard field with no kickoffs. Not true. Not true. It's just slightly, you know, we, uh, we have three downs instead of four downs. That's true. I won't deny that. It's just like, you know, it, it basically I'm upset because it plays into Dan's stereotype of Canada. That everything is just like America, but like bizarro version. Like, it, it's like America, but demolition man. You know, like in Canada, the only fast food chain is Mary Brown's. Not true. A better joke, in Canada, the only fast food chain is Tim Hortons. Not true. There are a lot of them, though. I, I can't deny that. Anyway, that was just my segue to get this started, yo. Speed plus damage right off the bat. I'm a happy man. We've been building good habits in Isaac. We've been ignoring zany items uh, much more than perhaps uh, consistently we've done over the past couple of months. And I think it's been important to keep us alive here. Uh, really appreciate the, really appreciate the HP. Thank you. I'm going to take myself down to five cents just to see where we stand. Five is not a magic number. Just a nice round number. Obviously, we're looking for a blood bag if possible. I'll take it. I think we're going to keep ourselves steady right here. I don't want to put us like one or two hits away from despair. I don't really want to take the pill. I do want the spirit arts. Thank you. That's an incredible get. Now I will take the pill. We gulped no trinket. Yes, please. Please jump here. Much appreciated. It's not nearly as much damage as I thought Lemon Party would be, but hey, it's damage we didn't have. Anyway. How are things going? Dude, things are good. No complaints. Here's the... There's nothing that compares to the serenity of an empty gym. And that's that's what happened this morning. I went down into the gym area. I, I know I'd talk about this uh, over and over, and it's probably like ad nauseum. But I still don't understand. The, there's no rhyme or, nor reason. Some weeks you go to the gym. Monday is packed. Wednesday, slightly less packed. Friday, nobody in the gym but you. That's rationalizable. I don't know if that's a real word, but you get what I mean. 
you can rationalize that. People's resolve is the strongest on Monday, and then, you know, by Wednesday, they're like, well, it's most people are still, like, you know, giving it their all. And some people are like, you know, I'm out. And then by Friday, people are like, oh, forget that. I had a, too many margaritas last night at Taco Thursday. Yeah, in Canada, we have Taco Thursday, okay? No, we don't. We have Taco Tuesday. Well, we have tacos, like, potentially every day. But, you know. I mean, not every day, but I mean, like, restaurants might have them at different times, is what I'm trying to say. Um... But then, like, some weeks you go down and Monday there's nobody, and Wednesday it's packed, and Friday there's nobody, and you're like, what the heck is going on here, dude? I don't, I don't understand. The, I think it's... Honestly, just give me the tears upgrade. I think it's the struggle of someone who lives a comically routine life, where, like, I almost internally schedule, like, everything in my brain, and I'm like, well, you know, at 1130, we gotta do this, and then at 12, we're gonna be doing this, 12, 15, we're doing this, blah, 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 let me out, please, thank you. That when I see people that are, you know, not necessarily doing less, but doing it in a more unstructured fashion, I go like, what the heck is, it's like an alien species or something. Anyway, but uh, it's not complaining. It's quite the opposite. The, the serenity of, uh, of an empty gym is a beautiful thing. You can just rip flatulence all day if you so choose. Now, I don't choose. I'm just saying if you chose, you could. I gotta be honest. This is a scary situation. Ho, oh, ho, ho. I also have to be honest. The frame rate in Isaac, I, I honestly don't know what's happening. Every other game has been functioning just fine. Uh, for whatever reason... Isaac is getting these weird frame rate hitches. I'm not saying it's Isaac's fault. Because that doesn't, like, to be honest with you, it just doesn't pass the smell test. How could it possibly be Isaac's fault? I'm assuming the game has not had a patch for, like, ten months. Um, I would like that. So I'm assuming it's some kind of, you know, oh no. No, 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 no. Oh my god, I actually leaned back in my chair, I got so scared. <laughs> I was like, I'm dead. No, no, no. This is embarrassing, but, you know, just just run back. You have everything you need to, to still stay steady here. Just play this and then walk away. Play this, walk away. It was the blood bank, dude. The siren song of the blood bank has, uh... Has led me to this uh, more dangerous fate. We did also go to the curse room, which was risky, and and we probably should have considered not doing that. Dude, I just like it's not that hard to just give me a, a red heart. Like, I'm really investing. I mean, I'm not. We took damage we shouldn't have taken. Let me be clear. But you expect to have a pretty decent chance at, at snagging a red heart in a situation like that, you know what I mean? For now, we will do the, uh... The reasonable thing. Shoot all these. I normally would probably not bother, but I also don't want to die, so... Really, all we're waiting for is a shop. If we get a shop, it's all hunky-dory, everything's forgiven, we could buy a red heart or a spirit heart, hopefully both, and, um, you know, the world's our oyster. We can also use our Yarrow rune to get a duplicate of whatever's in the shop, so I just hope this next room is not that bad. Please. And take a deep breath, don't get panicked. Okay, unfortunately, this means I hope the next room is not that bad. I feel like this is the longest second floor I've ever seen in Isaac history. Um, how is it possible that we are on eight and a half minutes? Like a dismemberment plan song? I cannot go in there. I can't go in after you. We could get hit so easily. There you go. Just waiting for you to exhaust yourself. Thank you. We live. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for the for the fire there. Is trying to do some sneaky stuff. I think we should be okay now. And 
Amazingly, it's like the closest I think I've ever come to death in an Isaac run without also simultaneously ruining our deal with the devil. It's kind of amazing to me. Well, honestly, things changed in a huge way there. I feel so much better about our overall situation. But anyway, yeah, it's been... Uh, it's been a nice week. I'm kind of lamenting the end of uh, summer. You know, it's throughout July and uh, early August, I was going on these long walks, you know, almost every night. 90 minutes, 2 hours, playing some Pokemon Go. I usually finish work around like 8, right? So I could go out like 8 to 10, and uh, the sun sets pretty late here in the summer. It sets around... I mean, it probably starts setting around in, in the middle of July or, you know, early July. It probably starts setting around, like, you know, half past nine. This is a great tears upgrade. Y okay, I definitely do think we want this. And I think we'll go for this, but it's a little dangerous. I won't deny that. Um, let's check this. Unlucky. It's probably the one directly below us. But let's move on nonetheless. But, so you could, you know, you'd be out for two hours fairly late at night, it's not a big deal. Now, like, you know, summer's still on, but uh, it's, it's obviously starting to hit the end of the summer season. Finish work at 8, I look outside, it's already kind of getting dark, and I'm like, ah, now I get it. I didn't use, help me please, thank you. I didn't used to leave the house like that much. So when it when the sun set earlier, it like literally did not matter to me. I was like, I don't see why people will complain about that. Now that I'm, you know, let's be honest, a slightly more normal human being who actually goes outside for a little vitamin D, um, that sounds like a double entendre, but that's the internet's corrupting influence. Don't let that get you down. Don't let it poison your brain. Um, now I'm like, oh, I totally get it. <laughs> No wonder people get bummed out in the winter time when the, you know, it's 5.30 p.m. and it's, you know, dark outside. Or, alternatively, when it's, uh, you know, they're going to school or work at like, you know, 8 a.m. and the sun hasn't even fully come up yet. It's like living in Iceland. Notice I didn't say Greenland. I don't want to get involved in current events. Also, you know, actually, that's a great question. I was trying to think... I, I guarantee, not guarantee, let me rephrase. My expectation, Krampus, that's a really good time for Krampus. My expectation is that uh, Iceland has more population than Greenland. But, I, and it, here's the thing. It might seem obvious because Iceland has, like, you know, cities. No offense to the city of Nook in Greenland. But Greenland is, like, the world's largest island. And if you want to argue about, like, well, what is and what isn't an island? Is North America an island base? Look, there's geologists and, and geographers come up with these distinctions, okay? It isn't just me. On top of that, Iceland is, uh, is so very, very small. No offense. Such a small country. Greenland, on the other hand, not really a country, I suppose. It's kind of like Denmark's Puerto Rico. But... You know, there's so much more surface area. That even if it's substantial, it's probably the least densely populated um, region on Earth. You know, over that big of a uh, surface area, at least. But even just a little population density multiplied by the area of the of the island itself, you would think that maybe it would have a chance. All I'm saying is I believe Iceland is a higher population, but I bet it's like... It's 4 to 1, not like 200 to 1. Iceland population, let's check. Iceland population, according to Google, 338,000. Greenland population, according to Google, 56,000. Okay, so it's like 6 to 1. Dude, I told you, it's not, it's not that wild. Not that much of a difference. I mean, it is a factor of 6, but... You know, I read something cool about Greenland. Um you know, in the current events. Uh, Greenland, obviously, is, you know, it's in the Arctic region, more or less. Most of it, at least. But, um, if not all of it, now that I think about it. But what's interesting about Greenland is that uh, 
Apparently. Then don't you the messenger, this is what I read. I hope I'm not misremembering it. But contrary to what you might believe, the majority of Greenland's population does not live in the more temperate southern areas. The majority of the population lives in the more uh, remote and obviously like inhospitable northern regions. It's like an inverted Canada. Like if you ever look at Canada's population, like something like 75% of it lives within, uh, you know, 100 or 200 kilometers of the US border. And there's a couple of reasons for that, you know. If you look at like the settlement of the of Canada and the US, you know, it happened in tandem. So obviously where there were like major population centers in America, there would be major, you know, there, there would be towns that would spring up, you know, just slightly north of that to, you know, feed into and feed off of that. But like on top of that, you, you get, if you ever look at Canada, it's like, on a map I mean, we got a lot of surface area. A lot of it gets very, very, very cold. You guys watch The Terror on Netflix? Or on Amazon Prime, I should say. Top right, by the way. That's like... When they go to King Williamland in The Terror, that's like what part of Canada is like. It's not the number one place that most people would choose to live. I'm not saying you can't live there, because, you know, that's ignorant of thousands of years of history and, you know, anthropology. I said hundreds of years. What I mean is, you know, tens of thousands, but... Most people live in, in the southerly regions. I grew up, um, it was probably like a two hour drive from the American border. We'll see what we can get here. Honestly, I think we could use some, some HP, especially with the deal with the devil. Uh, with, with, uh, Goathead, I mean. Um, I grew up like two hours away from the American border, and in the wintertime, it still hit like, you know, occasionally minus 30 Fahrenheit, which is also around minus 30 Celsius, sometimes colder. I mean, that's the thing, the U.S. gets cold as well. <laughs> it's not like it's a, it's a furnace down there. You know, it's like the northern parts of America, they still get real chilly. Hey man, there's been times I've been in San Francisco, which is in California, and uh, you know, I'll still need a jacket or something like that. It's got, ah, please. This actually might be my candidate for like least favorite room. It's so risky. Now, speaking of risk, I am gonna actually be a, a super dummy. I'm gonna go into the curse room, unless... Is there like three pennies on top of one spot there? Or did we... Did we go counterfeit penny or something? I don't know. I think we wait for a bomb, and then we can save a spirit heart by not going into the curse room through the spike door. This run is good, by the way. It, it was very scary, obviously, on the second floor. It's still a little scary from an HP standpoint, but it's coming together in a, in a pretty nice way, I think. But anyway, I'm gonna say, you know, it's it's interesting. Ever since I watched uh, The Terror, so like, you know, for two weeks, I've had a little bit more of like an interest in the Arctic and the Antarctic, or the polar regions. It's just, you know, because, you know, I have an interest in history to begin with. It, not as a professional, but you know, I like watching, you know, Ken Burns documentaries. I like watching, or I like listening to hardcore history and stuff like that. I like historical, you know, fiction and nonfiction. Even the trash shows. Like, you guys watch that Roman Empire show on Netflix? It's absolutely horrible. First off, I just, like, it's, it's so clearly, like, nakedly made to, uh, get profit. And I know, like, that's, we live in a capitalist, you know, society to begin with, so... You know, many actions are taken exclusively to gain profit, but this one is, like, clearly... I mean, you'd, why would you make another show about the Roman Empire unless you had something interesting to say or you exclusively wanted to make money? And they don't have something interesting to say. Let me put it... I'm just telling... If you think I'm being rude, watch the first episode of Roman Empire on Netflix. Tell me that show is good. That being said, I still watch, like, five episodes of it because I was like, oh, huh, I wonder what... Uh, Pliny the Elder will get up to in this episode. But, uh, you know, I watched the terror. It really kind of dawned on me. I was like, man, human beings live in the Arctic. In houses made of snow. Like, that's... I'm not, uh, like, going like, how wacky is that? I'm, like, that's amazing to me. That people have, uh... 
like they're able to make an existence in the Arctic, and and they do it without like, you know, electricity and. Well, I mean, this is historically speaking. Now, you know, if you go to Nunavut, there's, you know, people have power, but still. It's just interesting. You know, I, uh, one of my favorite documentaries is actually... Uh, you guys know Werner Herzog? He made Grizzly Man. He's made a lot of, I mean, movies and documentaries. He's a very famous documentarian, though. He made a movie called Encounters at the End of the World, where he goes to uh, McMurdo Station. Yes, the same one from The Thing. It's a real place. Uh, it's, it's the research base in Antarctica, where like literally a hundred percent of the people who live in Antarctica live and work. I think literally, a, I don't, I don't think there's any like native Antarcticans. Should go to the curse. Ah, let me out. <laughs> and it's like, it's amazing, you know, like the the amount. Uh, it, it shows you the resiliency of human beings. I think is the the end message I'm trying to get to here. You know, yeah, we've got... Uh, e even with uh, electricity and, you know, modern production of, you know, thermal gear and stuff like that, insulated coats and, you know, etc. and etc. and etc. It's still, like, it's, it's a real hassle and challenge and, and, you know, a trial and tribulation to survive in the Arctic. It's really interesting. And then I think, like... It's been like 10 years since I saw it, but I'm pretty sure that they force people, well, force is kind of a strong word, but they, I mean, it is sort of an initiation. Like, in order to get a permanent residency in um, McMurdo Station, you have to sleep overnight outside. Which, not like, haha, you've got frostbite, now welcome to the club. But it's like, you, you build like a, a little enclosure out of snow, which is actually, like, it's a great insulator. Um, and then you, you know, you sleep in that, and if you can manage to make it at night, then you're kind of, you're, you're part of the squad, you know what I mean? I know this sounds absurd, but I swear to you, it's in the documentary. <laughs> I'm not saying, I don't think people freeze overnight, I think they have, like, you know, staff on hand and you know you you get monitored to make sure you're not gonna die it's not like living in you know sparta or something like that it's just interesting you know meanwhile people come to visit vancouver and they're like i don't know it rains a lot i don't know if i could live here <laughs> how do you deal with the rain uh you know umbrellas wow that's crazy that's a little bit of a gaslight, to be honest. Nobody comes to Vancouver and is like, wow, the weather's extreme here. Extremely mild, perhaps. Now, it's an interesting situation. Um, I think with our incredible luck stat, we should take Gimpy. And then I think we should ignore everything else. Beautiful. In the, in the design and the desire to get stronger and, you know, safer. Oh, wow, I have a curse where at least I can see my map for once. That's nice. Dude, I gotta tell you, I've got, uh, uh, Google Open, you know, the search engine from the Alphabet Corporation. I just didn't know if you were familiar with with what Google was. Fun fact, they actually own, uh, own the website you're watching this video on right now, even if it's embedded somewhere else. And it's got, like, so I searched Iceland's population. I still got the tab open. Well, here's some of the autofills. What's the minimum wage in Iceland? Great question, you know? Iceland, uh, very well known for being, you know, socially progressive. You might expect it to have a high minimum wage uh, relative to other nations. Hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna purchase and dice shard this. Oh, not, not, not that. Not that. This. Dice shard. I think I'm gonna suck it up for stats. I don't mind the speed. You know what? Let's take a look. Current minimum wage in Iceland is... 300 ISK, but they want to raise it to 425. 300,000 ISK to USD. Excuse me, that's two. That's $2,400? <laughs> that must be per month. That's still, I mean, $2,500 a month American minimum. That's amazing. Maybe amazingly bad if you're a... Uh, you know, a small business owner? That would explain why, like, you know, every meal in Iceland 
costs like at least $30 American per person. But still, you know, isn't it also considered like one of the happiest countries on earth? You know, one of the, one of the countries with the greatest overall level of satisfaction? It's food for thought. But that's not really where I was going with this. Next autofill, what's the population of Iceland in 2019? Okay, it's a weird autofill because we're already answering that question, but so what? Final autofill, can you live in Iceland? Look, I never want to shame anybody for uh, asking a question. You know, it's the beauty of search engines, the internet, Wikipedia, etc, etc. If you have a question about something, you no longer have to live in ignorance. You know, you can... Get your question answered. I don't know if this is worth it, brother. You can get your question answered and, uh, you know, improve yourself. Learn a little bit about the world around you from the comfort of your own Herman Miller chair. However, that's an asinine question. Unless, you know, it, it might just be a phrased, poorly version of like, you know, can you immigrate to Iceland? But what it sounds like is, is Iceland hospitable? <laughs> <laughs> for human beings. I mean, I wouldn't wa want to get caught out, uh, you know, away from civilization at night in a blizzard, but still. The autofill always scares me. Like, no matter what sentence you type in on, on Google, the autofill will scare you, I think. Because there's always, like, how, maybe you're, you're like a single dad, you're searching for like, how to braid daughter's hair. And you're like, how? And then it's like, how to tell girl or boy I like them. And you're like, oh, that's innocent. And then you're like, how to, buh. and then it's like, how to boil human. And you're like, what? <laughs> Who's searching that? I don't believe that that's a real search, how to boil human. It's always one Google autofill that scares you. I'm trying to, you know, further the joke here, but it takes a second to get the punchlines in order. Oh my god, this is the slowest run of all time. It's a great time to have Dice Shard, though. Please be dead. Please be dead. He's frozen in place, so I can live with that, but... I mean, just... Here, I'll take a sentence. Let's just start with a very simple what is, okay? Sure. And we'll, we'll, we'll then go T-H-E. So here, let, let's try it, okay? And I... But let me hedge you off at the pass. Oh, well, the autofill's based on your own searches. Mmm... I don't know if that's true. And by the way, even if it is true, that doesn't mean the algorithm is right. Oh, well, if the algorithm is presenting you with that, you must have been searching for how to boil human. Not true. It's just some nerd with a laminate badge at Google writing the algorithm. He's not God. Or my father. Or my boss. What? Is. Okay, what is a surcharge? What is T? What is the population of Canada? What is T-H-E? This does seem pretty tailored to me right now. What is the... And then let's put a... Let's put a, a D. What is the date today? Come on. That's actually a good search. What is the DR? What is the drinking age in Mexico? All right. What is the DRU? <laughs> what is the drug shatter? What? Okay. Well, this honestly, this bit just did not work very well. I thought it would. I thought we would get something ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know if we did, to be honest with you. And now I feel like it's undermined the entire bit that came before it. And, uh, well, I apologize for that. Because we were going somewhere humorous and now it's gone. Ooh. If this is what your bedroom looks like, you should see a doctor immediately. Or start cleaning up at the very least. Like... Well, we don't really care about that, to be honest. Like, Apollyon's void, built-in void, is working wonders for us. This will give us three extra spirit hearts. I'm just gonna tell you, the run is fine. We know uh, we should have at least, like, six... Maybe as much as, like, ten HP right now when it comes to spirit hearts. But we've been screwed on curses. So many curse of the unknown, so many curse of the lost. Come on. 
Stars card, Judgment. We'll pop the Judgment. Um, leprosy is a is a suckable item. Anyway, I'm just interested. In, you know, I think the as we become more. Uh, let me let me make it more personal. As I become more beholden to the conveniences of modern life, um, I get more interested, you know, in how humankind not only survived, but, you know, like, propagated uh, w when those conveniences were not available, when they didn't exist yet, you know? Like, one of the things, and this is an honest-to-goodness question, it makes it sound like I'm dunking on the Inuit. That's not the case at all. But, you know, when I was watching uh, The Terror, and, you know, they're, they're, and it, The Terror, admittedly, is is a fiction show. It, it is based on a true story, but it's also based on a novel that's based on a true story, so you, you get the idea. Parts of it are definitely made up, for sure. Um, like Toonbach, for example. You gotta see the show if you wanna know what that means. But, either way. Um, you know, they show, like, the Inuit people, and they're living in igloos. And it's just, it's, these are tiny, like, domed houses made of snow bricks. And I was like, man. I get you're busy, because, like, you know, you gotta spend hours and hours, like, hunting for the food required to survive, and, you know, the furs required to keep you warm enough to survive, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. But simultaneously, I was like, how do you deal with that level of boredom? Like, don't, don't you just get, like, I, I want to, like, travel back in a time machine. We might as well. Not travel back in a time machine, but I, I just want to, you know, speak to them and be like, what do you do to deal with the boredom? Like, if you live the majority of your life on, like, a flat white ice sheet, and then, you know, for your leisure time, you're inside of a, a domed snow house that's like I don't even know like less than 40 square feet like don't don't you have incredible amounts of boredom even though you also have an incredible amount of responsibility I don't know maybe they'd be like hey dummy like we spend uh, you know 14 hours a day hunting for like a meal that we're gonna eat immediately as soon as we get it like, uh, we, we don't have time to be bored. Mostly we're just happy to not be freezing to death. And I would be like, you know what? That's a fair answer. I'm not getting into the time machine to make myself feel smart by asking them, you know, erudite questions. I'm getting into the time machine to get an honest answer, even if it comes at the expense of my own, you know, comfortable life right now. Even if they, even if they, they, uh, think that I'm a, I'm a little baby who wouldn't make it out there, which, you know, they're probably correct, at least right now. It's interesting. Maybe boredom is the furthest thing from their mind. May who knows? Maybe. Because they, uh... Can't really do much with that if we want to keep, uh, void here. Just, just ice them, dude. Um... Maybe... Because they haven't been exposed to, you know, all these entertaining distractions. They they don't get bored at all. They can, you know, entertain themselves just by, you know, watching a drop of water slowly, you know, work its way down the side of their house. Oh my god. I, it was like the most incredible dodge I've ever done. Followed by... How did he screw it up by walking right into the enemy? This, and it happens in a lot of runs. This is like where the rubber meets the road, you know? We had a good time talking about, you know, what I've been watching on Amazon Prime Video. Now it's time to uh, focus on Isaac a little bit. We've only got four spirit arts. You know, the run is, is very good, but it lacks HP. And I do feel a modest amount of resentment Especially if we're gonna lose because I've picked up some underwhelming HP upgrades in order to supplement our diet of health um, But we could still definitely use a little bit more Matriarchs a pain in the butt honestly, that's what you do there the matriarch That's a situation where you play around, you know 
I don't mean like play around like horseplay. I mean like you base your strategy on the matriarch in that situation. I don't care about sucking up an item. I just wanted you dead. And I've got to tell you, that is actually fairly tempting, but... In fact, I do not think it's fairly tempting. I think that's what you take. And I know it seems very risky. But with the battery, I think this is the right time to pivot, although it scares me a great deal. Ansus, very important. If that was a red chest, I'm all in. Not a red chest, I'm all out. Don't... Just keep those flies coming, dude. Battery charge. Incredibly nice to see. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, thank you. I greet you. Just focus in on getting through this room. Then we can have some com some comfort, some anecdotes. For real, like when I was younger, uh, not not younger like a, a child, but you know, like an adult child, like when I was you know 22 or something. I always thought like my ideal vacation destination for like a once in a lifetime vacation, and I think I still harbor like a little bit of this, but it was like. You know, you can go to Antarctica. Safely. I mean, like, there's a, a little bit of inherent risk, obviously, just because of the extreme climate. And also, you know, you fly over there in, like, a like a little puddle jumper airplane from New Zealand, I think. But I always thought that would be cool. Or, like, even, to be honest with you, like, going to North Korea. Which you can do. But, you know. That was when I, I was... I've never been a thrill seeker. But that was definitely like when I was a little bit even more of a thrill seeker. Nowadays, I'm like, it's not like I would actually be scared of something happening to me in North Korea. But I definitely think that, I mean, there's obviously a greater chance that something would happen to you. Um, and then secondarily, all of your tourism money is going to support, you know, like a fascist regime. <laughs> Desperate to uh, put a positive face forward for the rest of the world in spite of the fact that, you know, things are horrible there for the average citizen. Um, but now I'm just, it's, it's a couple of different things. One is like, you know, obviously there is like a moral reason not to. Um, and then secondarily, like, I don't, I, don't, I don't feel the need to court that level of risk anymore. Even like when I lived in South Korea, I did entertain the thought, you know, once, because once you finish your full-time contract, you know, how many periods, and this is maybe like a very entitled thing to say, but how many periods do you get in your adult life when you don't necessarily have to work, if that makes sense? For a lot of people, the answer is probably zero. But, uh, you know, for me, I was like, hey, if, once I finish my contract working in South Korea, I could take like a couple weeks or a month off and, and just travel around Asia. I ended up not doing it, but what I was thinking was like, you know, you can catch a, a ferry in South... This is at the time. I think it's been discontinued since, but... Um, you could catch a ferry in South Korea that would uh, sail up... Well, I don't know. What do, you, what do you call it? It's not a sailboat, but I think it's still called sailing. Um, to like Irkutsk in uh, Eastern Russia. And I was like, man, that'd be really cool. You gotta pay like 200 bucks for a visa or something like that as a, as a Canadian to get into Russia. But, you know, Russia has like a certain level of mystique uh, amongst North Americans and, and probably amongst, you know, the world's population. This was in a period, you know, pre-Cambridge Analytica. Where it was kind of like, you know, everything's hunky-dory. There's no concerns with it necessarily. I decided like, you know... I'll just go home and play video games instead and, you know, save my money and also maybe it's not the best idea for me to be traveling alone through a country where I don't speak the language at all and, like, have no guide. But it did, it, the thought entered my mind, no joke. Now I'm like, are you insane? 
Not because I necessarily think Russia is a dangerous country to be a tourist in, but I'm like... <laughs> it's a little bit higher than my level of risk. Is, uh... Is willing to go now. You know what I mean? I don't see that as a... As a bad compromise, too. I see it as kind of like growing up a little bit. That's nothing against the country of Russia or the citizens of Russia, by the way. I have Russian viewers. I know I have Russian viewers because when I complained in the 2018 Olympics about the fact that uh, the Russian men's hockey team is stacked despite the fact that all the other teams are basically garbage as a result of the NHL not participating in the Olympics, a lot of people were like... Hey man, like it's not cool that you're dunking on, you know, your Russian fans this much. And I was like, you know what? You're right. That's not cool. Admittedly. Just a a place I would want to travel with a guy, if that makes sense. So, I think the run should be under control now. All we need to do, we kill Isaac, and then we pop the Emperor card and kill Blue Baby. Should be under control. Ay, 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 ay. Dude, taking Satanic Bible basically sorted this run right out. Were it not for that pickup, I'm not going to say we wouldn't be alive. But I think it would have been, like, substantially more in question. And in fact, just picking up Satanic Bible, keep in mind, it took us down to one uh, Spirit Heart when we picked it up. Within, like, two and a half minutes of awkwardly trying to suggest that uh, there are some countries in the world that I would visit when I was younger that I would probably not visit now without offending anybody, which is impossible. Um, we've gone from a little anxiety to an incredible amount of comfort, you know? Like... This run is now A-OK. -okay. Nothing is likely to go wrong. It's a little underwhelming on damage, but... Certainly, like, you gotta remember, the last time we lost was with the Polyon, so... To just be in a position where we're not gonna lose, in, unless, like, the unthinkable happens somehow... Uh, that's, uh, it's a nice change of pace. Better seed? Maybe. Uh... Better choices? I honestly think definitely here. Let's see what we got. Hmm. Now, when I said the unthinkable... <laughs> Dude, I we, we gotta roll it. It'll just be funny, okay? So let's Emperor... And then roll this son of a gun. All of our stats got worse. Every single stat except HP, I guess. That's comical. I mean, let's be honest, I didn't see that coming. We still we have so much HP. A loss is is basically unthinkable. But funny nonetheless how this worked out. And you know what? This is a perfect opportunity. We had a healthy outlet to express our Zane, and um, it, it should be relatively consequence free. But now, the next time I see a full run reroll, I get to remember this and go, oh no, I would do. Of course, we're not gonna reroll our whole run. Are you insane? I'm just, I'm more surprised that we managed to reroll uh, this whole run. I guess we didn't have that many items, to be fair, because we sucked a lot up, but. Uh, we managed to reroll this entire run without getting, like, a single item that's really useful. Like, even despite the fact that we had, uh, we got a tiers upgrade on the reroll, our rate of fire went down because I think we, we lost the ability to stay ahead of the cap somehow. Alright. I'm not gonna mess about here. Like, we could still lose. Our best damage dealer is, like, Sister Maggie right now, so... I think the, the demon hearts make it very unlikely, and then even, like, my shadow is at least doing something. But, it, I mean, this is an absolutely terrible reroll. But again, maybe a healthy outlet to express that reroll is a positive thing. 
Perhaps. Spider mod, just just light him on fire or something, please. I'm just I'm begging you. We're doing 26 damage per shot. It's less than we did at the start of the game. I mean, we didn't have Spider mod back then, but you can just look at our damage stat and, and know that that's true. I'm actually like, just hit me so my demon hearts can do the work, please. Thank you. Even the demon hearts are not doing that much. I gotta be honest. I'm feeling just the slightest bit of anxiety right now. Not enough to be truly frightened, but enough to be like... Like, enough that this serves as a cautionary tale. Let's put it that way. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. I'll set a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will. See you next time. See ya!